Hello and welcome by another video of the Orchid Saga. Today is the day where I will do uh, my checkups for the reservoir of the Miltonias. And I tried to do this a little bit differently, uh, like I discussed in my last update with the Phenoliopsis. So we do little parts where I can show every plant, every Miltonia I have, so we get an indication of which ones uh, I have and uh, how they do. So I try to do a little different setup uh, this time and see how that works. So, um, but there are quite a few of them, so uh, I'm going to start now and uh, we will see how this, uh, this uh, works out. So, and here's the first one. This is my Miltonia Sunset and then the Spotted one. Um, as you can see, it has one bulb browning up, so that needs to be uh, taken care of very soon. And also, the bulbs are a bit shorter than before, so I'm, I'm not sure. I don't think this one is doing very well. I did get this from a seller uh, where a lot of my orchids did have Fusarium, so I'm a bit afraid that this one has it as well. But uh, let's see at the roots uh, system very quickly how that looks. Um, there's that flower. We have some roots here. I hope you can still hear me. So we have roots here, but they're not all great. But we have some uh, good ones as well. So it's. Uh, it's quite a big plant, are getting bigger, but yeah, I have this bulb here that's not looking good, and this one. So I will uh, do a uh, update on this soon, a separate video, and we will see what's uh, going on. But this is my uh, sunset, spotted sunset. So this one had a pH of 7.7 .7 and a parts per million reading of uh, 106. So that's uh, that's all good. So this one can uh, can go again, and uh, like I said, this will be. Uh, updated fairly soon and we will have a look at the plant itself but for now I'm going to check the rest of my Miltonias and the next one on the list is my beautiful Peter Kamp and um, this one has uh, it's, it's very fragrant it has two spikes blooming and uh, a third one coming here this one is uh, for quite a while in my collection but it's very hard to to get it to grow uh, in self-watering, at least this one. So it doesn't have much roots visible on the uh, outside of the pot. Well, actually, I see barely. A, no, I see don't a few roots here probably. But as you can see, it's making new roots. Whoops, that leaf is in a way. So I uh, and these guys are going finally into the media. I did put some Cintiq around it, and it seems to loving the Cintiq. So it needs a little bit help to, uh, and I see branches there as well. So I think from now on this one uh, will do better. But uh, I really, really like the blooms, and highly fragrant, beautiful, uh, beautiful plant. So I will do my checkup, and uh, I will discuss it with you in a second. And the Peter Kamp had a pH reading of 7.4, so that was okay, but the parts per million reading from 230, so that's uh, too high, I not go over the 200, so what I did, I cleaned the pot and uh, put in some fresh water, so uh, with a uh, way lower parts per million reading, I think around 100, and I will give this a flush and then she goes uh, back into the greenhouse. And this is my Festiva. And I had this one to bloom for the first time this year, so I was very uh, happy with that. And uh, this one is working on the new growth there and here and one behind that growth. I also see one growth coming here, so that makes four, five, here's another one. And maybe in here, you never know, but no, not yet, but five new growths so far, so that's uh, Pretty, uh, pretty awesome, of, of course. As you can see, it's in a fairly small pot. So this one is uh, on the list for a uh, up potting pretty soon because it really needs a bit of bigger pot. As you can see, the growth is really pushing to the side, so that that's not good. And it will go back in the same system, so up potting shouldn't be that much of a problem for this one. It's just a time issue, and I think I, uh, in the very near future, I have the time to do an up potting with you guys. But this is my festival. Let's check it, and I will be right back. 
And this one had a, a pH reading of 7.5, so that's uh, still okay. And a parts per million reading of 65, so fairly low, that's what I like. So it's eating her feet, and I didn't uh, show the roots yet, but it has a, it's working on a beautiful, nice root system as well. So this one is really doing uh, well for me. And I don't have to adjust anything, it can go back. And it should be good for at least another three months. Well, actually, pH-wise, I will, uh, like I said, do an up part on this uh, fairly soon. And this is my uh, Ragnellii. And we have still some blooms left, but uh, most of them are really uh, done blooming. And I will do a uh, little bit of maintenance while I'm uh, doing the measurements as well. So I will cut off the flower spikes and make the plant uh, look a bit better again. This is a very big one, so I... Uh, We'll uh, take it out and we'll have a look. Well, at least I will have a look. I cannot show you the roots in because it's a black pot, so it doesn't uh, uh, do much if I uh, lift it out of the pot. So I will be uh, right back with the readings and uh, the measurements, and we will uh, d discuss how uh, this one is doing. So, and this one had a pH reading of 6.6 .6 in the reservoir. So I did put in a little bit of calcium just to uh, be sure to... Uh, Hit that three mark che check up. If I don't do that, it, it may uh, go down a, a bit quicker than I anticipated, anticipated, and therefore I may have a chance to lose the root system. So, therefore, I gave it a little bit calcium to get it uh, at least above seven again. So, I can now wait three more months and then do another check up. And the parts per million was uh, 56, so a very low parts per million. That was kind of to be expected because. I just cut off 17 spikes of these and we have still re three remaining spikes. We have one here, one below here and one here. So that makes a, sp uh, a total of 20 spikes for this season plus a lot of new growths in all kinds of directions. As you can see here we have a beautiful uh, yeah, way of growing this one. It, it makes a kind of a lot of uh, bulbs. It's even going this way. I think I cut it once here, so I uh, did give away a piece. But uh, this one, yeah, I try to get it uh, to hold it uh, one more season in this pot, and I, uh, then I probably have to do a repot and dividing it. I think. But uh, so far, so good. So, and the next one is my Bartley Swartz White with the beautiful blooms. And yes, these are fragrant. Just a regular uh, flower fragrance, I think. It's not very special in my opinion, but it's fragrant and it's fairly strong. Um, so this one is also on a list, not, not necessarily for up potting. It's quite a, a, quite a pot full already, but it, it may could do one, uh, one year with this. But as you can see, I have a very big fern growing in this pot as well. I like this fern. But I, I want to separate it because I think it may take too much nutrients up uh, before the orchid can get to them. So uh, yeah, I need to separate uh, separate these guys. And I have a uh, note on my uh, whiteboard that I need to uh, put up ferns. And that is what I mean by putting up the ferns, taking them out of the orchid pots. But uh, I will uh, measure this one and then we will uh, discuss the results again. And I forget this part again, but this is the root system. A heck of a lot of roots. But all those little teeny tiny brown ones are roots from that fern. But this one, this orchid as well, has a beautiful, strong um, root system. And this pot is just... I can barely get any movement in it anymore. It's just filled with roots. So this is beautiful. This one is doing really well, both of them, the orchid and the fern. But yeah, this is a uh, this is the site of the root system. It's beautiful. So the pH reading of this one was 6.9 or is 6.9. Um, so I didn't do anything about it. Uh, but also, but the uh, parts per million reading, I don't think I have ever had it so low. It was. 21 parts per million. So for me that means something that this one, this guy, this fern, is really enjoying the fertilizer as well. Normally if an orchid is low it's around 40. That's very low in my case. There's always something left there. But uh, I, yeah, the fern is really eating it. And that's also a nice thing of these measurements I, can, uh, I, I think. Because I now know and I sort of can see what the influences is 
uh, when you have a big fern in the side in, in uh, the same pot as an orchid it probably the orchid doesn't get uh, the fertilizer or the amount of it uh, as it should because this one is really eating everything up <laughs> basically so therefore probably the bulbs of these uh, this milk barty swartz uh, are a little bit um, shorter than uh, than uh, when I bought it even though it has a massive root system so I think uh, it will do better without the fern this time I have two plants because those are the same ones they are both uh, Angela Barker not only Angela Barker and they came in the same pot two plants in one pot and I like to split them up I like to have one, one uh, plant in one pot generally speaking and yes you probably guessed it but this one is on the same list as the Abortus Swartz White I will get that fern out um, as soon as I have time this one is really growing as well and I don't want them in the same pot for obvious reasons as we just saw with the previous one so I will do my uh, checkups oh before I do let's have a look can we see some roots yes we can we see a root here we have a root there not that much but they are fairly new for me fairly young I don't know how new they are let me check 2020 um, 2020 uh, last October so almost a year now and this is the last bulb so it's doing fairly well as it does this one this one is working on a beautiful bulb let's say way bigger I'm sorry way bigger than this one this one grew here and then this one so that's looking better yeah and this one has a lot of roots this pot is a little bit smaller so probably therefore we can see the roots a bit better maybe but uh, as you can see a lot of fern roots in there as well so yeah so I uh, will do the checkup and I will be right back to you guys so the one with the fern in had a pH reading of 6.7 and a parts per million of 72 I think because of the fern again uh, so I did uh, put in a little bit extra calcium there and the second one this one without the fern had a pH reading of 7.2 and a parts per million of 141 so this has more um, leftovers than this one and I think again that it's because of that fern in the pot so that's why I like this little uh, experiment. So I now get a general idea of the influences of ferns in the pot with your orchids. <laughs> and I like that. So in this next one, this big one is my uh, Meltonia Spectabilis uh, variation, uh, yeah, variation Mor Morliana Royalty. Uh, this is one of the two that I still have and this one and did bloom we saw the blooms come uh, in, uh, pass by in the updates quite uh, quite often and it's a very big plant and I thought it were two in one pot, one pot but it isn't we have two directions of growth and I try to m maintain this in a pot but it's growing like in every direction so it's uh, fairly hard this one is also on the list I don't know if you can see it but this bulb here we have a brown spot so I want to take this bulb off so that's not uh, not looking good I hope you can see it now a bit better well this is better I think so uh, this one will uh, we'll do an update on this one as well probably in the same uh, video as the sunset we saw, saw earlier but yeah I'm going to try to take this out of this pot uh, because we have two of the same pots the last one is holding the reservoir and uh, we will do our measurements and I will be right back so this one had a pH reading of 7.2 and a parts per million of 107. So once again, uh, nothing, uh, nothing wrong here. Beautiful uh, results. So this one can go straight back in the greenhouse. And uh, like I said, we will catch that bulb pretty soon. This is a same part of the same plant as well. Uh, the bloom for us with three spikes. So I will uh, cut those off. It's done flowering now and we will start measuring. This one I can lift out of the pots a little bit easier than the previous one. And this one has a transparent pot. So I will try to get it out as good as I can. And I have a few roots here. I hope you can see it. A few more beautiful roots there. 
and it's only now it's only there still but this one is uh, has uh, quite some roots and doing fairly well it's looking good but we don't have much roots we have a few here here and there on the side of the pot but uh, probably somewhere soon we will have some more roots on the uh, outer section of the pot so I will do my measurements and I will be uh, right back to you guys so this one has a pH of 7.2 and 140 no 118 uh, parts per million so that's okay but it's always good to check I like to do some maintenance like I said but I don't know if you can see it let's try to get it uh, more in focus but what's happening over here you see that new growth is trying to grow downside into the pot so it's probably hit the edge of the pot and thought well let's try that way so I need to uh, try to get it out and uh, let it obviously go out of the pot um, like these guys are doing so therefore checking your orchids is very uh, it's a very good day on a regular basis so you can uh, yeah, prov provide um, these things from going uh, into a disaster I think so I uh, let's try to save it and I will be uh, right back so that uh, did go fairly easy, luckily. But as you can see, it's now hanging over the pot. I put a little bit of gravel underneath it, so it has something to, to lay on. Uh, here's my camera, I'm sorry. <laughs> so yeah, I think we got this one in time. Luckily, because uh, I like uh, as many new growths as, uh, as I can get, of course. So let's grab another, uh, another Methonia. And the next one is my, I'm sorry, that was the tripod. My Miltonia Ragnellii Variation Aurea. Aurea. Looks very similar to a sunset, in my opinion. But uh, this one, I try my best and try my best. It's not really doing well for me. But it has no choice. It's making new growth. It's not really liking uh, the setup, I, I think. But uh, it has to deal with it. And I hope eventually it will. Because it's it's a fairly nice plant, but it's small and just not doing it yet. So hopefully it will. Let's measure it and uh, like a uh, like I uh, always do in this video, I will uh, be right back to you guys. So I cannot see a single root yet. This is small labor rock, small lacca and uh, Cintiq. Because I had the small lacca laying around, but. Honestly, I probably should have used uh, bombers, but I uh, don't want to do a repot on this, uh, this one again. I did, uh, did not long ago a repot pot on this one. But yeah, it had a, um, a pH reading of 7.3 and also a pot per million of 118. So that should be fine. So I uh, put it back and hope for the best. It doesn't look very horrible, but it doesn't want to get uh, to make... Uh, more new roots. I like. Uh, I would like to have more new roots on this one, but who knows in the near future. So yeah, this is another success story. This one and the Ragnellia. I think this one. I believe this is the summer breeze. It really does look very similar to it. I, it it's obviously a no idea, but anyhow, the Ragnellia had uh, 20 spikes. It's a very big plant, but this one is the second one. This one had, I think, around 10 spikes. I will uh, count them in a minute. But uh, yeah, it did grow very, very well. Beautiful new growths, new bulbs, and a, as you can see, a lot of blooms I had on this one. So um, yeah, let's lift it quickly out of the pot so we can have a look at the roots. And as is expected, a lot of roots here. So yeah, that's beautiful. But this one is uh, due for an up-potting as well. As you can see, it's on the side of the pot. And probably a new growth there. I'm sorry, there stuck. So yeah, this one needs an upadding uh, fairly quickly. But um, yeah, like I said, this one is doing fairly well. I will measure it and uh, then I will be right back again. So for this one we have a, a pH of seven and a porch vermilion of 58. That was to be expected because it's a fairly big plant. It's growing so it's uptaking its fertilizer but once again if you think about it I feed around 100 150 and this one has still 58 um, parts per million left so there's still some feed in there the ones with the ferns in 
uh, especially that uh, that one uh, the uh, body swatch white had only 20 parts per million so even that fern ate uh, ate a lot uh, of that fertilizer up by that i mean that why should i feed more i think i have it fairly under control i don't have a residue here uh, salt builds up and that's exactly what i want so that i try to balance and i try to balance um a fertilizer that is uh, right for a fairly bigger plant and a smaller one so i don't have to feed differently every single arc because that would take up too much time it doesn't fit my schedule so i think uh yeah i think this this suits me at least well and i think the orchids uh, so far are doing uh, pretty well as well so let's see and check the next one and we have two again same story two plants in the same pot these uh, are my castaneis I hope I pronounced it right. With the same order, also from last October 2020. They look okay, they did very well, but now this one starts to uh, get this pale looking leaves. So I wouldn't be surprised that this one has a too low uh, reading of the pH, so it cannot uptake its nutrient, uh, nutrients as it should. That could be uh, the problem, um, but I'm not sure. Let's have a look. Yeah, I have a few roots here, there, not much, but how much can you have for a Miltonia? Let's check this one pretty quick as well. This one is not showing any roots on the side of the pot yet. So, but uh, once again I will do a checkup and uh, we will see if this one uh, has a too low of a pH. Okay, so the results. A little bit different uh, than I uh, had anticipated. <laughs> but uh, this one had a reading of 6.9 pH wise, that's okay, and a part per million of 132, that's okay as well. That one in the back, the one with the pale leaves, had a, a reading of, um, here you are, of 6.4, so that's not. Not a problem, it wasn't the pH, but it had a parts per milli reading of 189. That's too high, especially of, for me and my experience, especially for those smaller orchids with not that much root system. Those extra nutrients in there, the salt builds up, is, uh, can be quite uh, hard for the orchid and even lead to, uh, to dying. Uh, eventually so therefore I think it's showing me it gives given me a sign that it cannot uh, take up the nutrients or it's at least not happy probably uh, it could be that some nutrients are blocking one another because there are too many of it something like that so what I do now is I have this in pure RO water I'm soaking this I didn't pH it down just pure RO water because I don't need a low pH for this uh, I let it soak for about an hour and then I will flush it and um, then it will have a very low pH again. Oh, I'm sorry, parts, parts per million again. I, I think around 50 or something. And, and then I will keep an eye on it. But this definitely needed some uh, some maintenance, especially uh, in, in the salt builds up. And I think there, for the moss is also starting to turn black. There is still some green moss, but I have a little bit too much fertilizer in there. Too much fertilizer build up. So that's my plan and then it will be okay for a few months again, probably. So and here I have another one, the next one. This is uh, from the same order as uh, the other uh, ones, the smaller ones. This is the Goldale Mor Morier. Morier. Uh, this is only one plant. I thought for uh, when I just got it, uh, did get it, I thought probably two plants as well, but it has only one rhizome, so it's growing in two directions. But um, it's doing fairly well and I really like uh, the moss inside of the pot. So uh, yeah, let's check this one as well. Uh, do a quick view on the roots if we can see anything. I don't think so because it's a fairly big pot. Yeah, they, they do not have massive root systems yet. So uh, I say yet because I think they will come. Uh, at least I hope. <laughs> but for now uh, this is it and I will measure it and then we uh, will discuss the results. Okay, so I'm back and this was, was the, uh, to be expected because um, it doesn't have much root, it isn't a big uh, orchid yet. So we had a part per million reading of 166, so a little bit higher than I like. 
not not way too high uh, and a pH of 7.1 so that's okay but what I like to do now is just gonna to refill the uh, reservoir with only pure or all water to, just to clean it up a little bit more so we'll throw this away and I have pure or all water here and I'm going to flush it give it a nice flush and a refill on the reservoir and my all, our water has normally a pH around 6.5 up to 7 sometimes a little bit higher I don't know why but it's uh, fairly high but um, so it's okay because I like to have a little bit uh, a pH around 7 anyhow in my parts so therefore I don't need a pH down solution so this is it and this uh, one should be good to go for another three months so and then we have these two guys these are my Goodale crossed with Candida that's this one let's have a quick look this one is making a beautiful root system as you can see so that's doing, this is uh, also uh, in my uh, Fusarium update, so this one has Fusarium, as did this one, beautiful blooms, this is my Cloessii, and it's doing also fairly well, oh I'm sorry my hand is in the way, it's also making quite some beautiful new roots, so, but, whoops, the problem with these guys, besides the probably fusarium, <laughs> I think they're doing okay. So maybe I did cut it off, but they these guys have fairly uh, a fairly amount of syntic in there, which I do not like. I can think I can show it better with this one. I hope there, just above my finger, you can see some white dots, and there as well. That's mold starting because they are too wet, even for shell watering. Too much synthetic will uh, keep them too wet, so they are not, not very happy, both of them. So I will do a very, uh, in a soon new, f in a soon, uh, very soon, I will do a, uh, a repot, an up potting on these guys. Try to get some synthetic out of there because they really start growing. And uh, do an up potting on them with more pumice, way more pumice. So I, therefore I don't measure them because then the pH will be... Uh, as when we start growing in cell watering it will be up again so I don't need to adjust this uh, at this uh, moment but I wanted to share that with you guys as well and then we have this beautiful one this beautiful purple flowers and it's a cross between the blue new ti and Moriana. but this one is fairly new it's uh, from August I think I have a video on this when I did a report on it. I'm not sure because I was uh, in the middle of a uh, re uh, uh, restructuring work on a house, etc. So I'm not completely sure on top of my head, but I will look it up and I will then have a link. Um, but what I don't want to do is not a checkup because this one doesn't have a reservoir yet, but I will check if I can see some root growth and start giving this one a uh, reservoir. Do I see fresh roots here going into the media? Yes, I do. Only a few, but this is uh, now because it's more than a month here. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit more than a month here, and uh, most of most around uh, most of the times it's around that time that they can uh, start filling up their reservoir because they have roots growing. They are starting to acclimate uh, acclimate to my. Uh, growing system and uh, the new growing area therein so yeah I'm now going to give this a reservoir but therefore I don't need to check this one yet this will be in the next round and this is a crane's new river it's a Mil Miltasia cross uh, I have it in this group as well that's uh, with which we um, get into if we have crosses of different genera. Which genera do you put them in? Well, most of the times it's for me just how they look. If they have a more growing habit of a Miltonia, which I think this one do does, so I put it in that group. If it would look a bit more like a Brassia, 
I will put it in a brush here, but uh, the roots, etc., and how the plant looks itself, I thought it uh, looks more like a Miltonia. So th that's a little bit how I do it. Um, so yeah, this one is uh, also fairly new. I bought this one in uh, April this year, so it's not a very uh, long in my collection. And this one was also infected with Cassarium, but I do see a new root growing there. On that new growth. This one is not doing much, but this one is doing a little bit better and has uh, several new roots. So let's check this one up and uh, see how it does. So this one had a reading of 6.9 and uh, pH wise and 132 parts per million. What I did is just give this a quick rinse of RO water because it doesn't have much roots just to be on the safe side. It didn't give it any calcium yet because I don't think it needed it needs it yet. Um, so we're going to put this one back and then we will have a look at this little one that is sitting there to soak. Give it a flush and then we uh, will take it from there. So and now it's uh, time to give this one a flush and then we're done for, uh, for this uh, group. So I will take it out. It had a bit of a soak like we discussed and now I like to pull some fresh water through it. Give it an extra flush and fill this up with clean oral water as well. And we put it back. And we have a nice reading on the water meter, so it is enough water in the reservoir, and now it can go back in the in the greenhouse, and hopefully it will uh, get some color again. We shall see. So, and they all are back into their place. Um, so this was the checkup for the Miltonias. I hope I did a, a bit of a better job filming this than I did with my fails. Uh, like I said there, I uh, still am um, learning to how to film this uh, best. But um, yeah, this is it for now. Uh, thank you for watching and as usual if you have any questions or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below. And uh, I hope uh, to see you at one of my next videos. Bye bye!